this section we'll be discussing the first set of rules of replacement in 7.3. De Morgan's rule, commutativity, associativity, distribution. Notice that we're not using the rule of double negation. Since this rule is fairly self-evident, I'm simply dropping it from the rules. You're welcome to use it if you like, if it makes things simpler. But in 6.6, .6, as we've already seen, we didn't need the rule of double negation to perform some basic logical operations. So I'm going to continue with the idea that we don't need it now. We call this set of rules, rules of replacement, which means you can replace any expression with its equivalent expression anywhere within a proof. And this will be very helpful, as we'll see. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. In this first example, we have one premise, and it looks like there's not much you can do, since there is only one premise. But look in the conclusion. There's a letter F, which is not in the premise, so we know we're going to have to add something. However, it's not the F we add, it's the negation of F. We need to add the negation of F because we know we're going to have to do De Morgan's rule. And we have to plan for that. If we just added the F and did, then did De Morgan's rule, we wouldn't get the conclusion. So now we perform De Morgan's rule, and notice when we do this we have to change the sign from a disjunction to a conjunction. But this proof is not finished, because in order to finish any proof, you have to derive the conclusion as it appears exactly. And since line 3 is not exactly the conclusion, we'll have to use the rule of commutativity, thus proving the argument valid. On the surface, our next example looks more difficult. It almost looks like there's nothing you can do at the start. This is kind of a common experience you'll have once you get into the rules of replacement. But a closer look reveals that there are actually quite a lot of clues in this proof as to what we should be doing. For instance, number one is a proposition that can be changed by De Morgan's rule. In fact, now that we have De Morgan's rule, you're going to want to be cued into the fact that propositions like this can be changed. Another clue appears if you look at lines two and three which appear to be the premises of a hypothetical syllogism. So we can actually do two things right from the start on this proof. Let's do De Morgan's rule first. We could have done the hypothetical syllogism first. It really doesn't matter. Turns out we're going to need both of them. Notice another advantage of doing the De Morgan's rule on line one is that you take a disjunction and turn it into a conjunction. Before we get to that though, let's go ahead and do the hypothetical syllogism. Again, we could, we could have done this step first so as we mentioned, the advantage of doing De Morgan's rule on line 1 is you have a conjunction on line 4, which we can now simplify. It appears that we want the negation of k, because this is going to work with line 5. We can derive the negation of s using modus tollens. Now the conclusion itself is a conjunction, which very possibly means that it came from the rule of conjunction, provided we have the not s and the not j on lines by themselves. We have not s, now we have to do is go back on line 4 and simplify the not j. And of course from here it's a simple process to put them together using the rule of conjunction, thus proving the argument valid.